New York likes winners. You can have, you could have God himself as a striker for the Cosmos, and if you lost, nobody cares. I've scored, I think, in 220 league games, 253 goals, so that's who I was. So I was the man to put the ball in the back of the net. Giorgio Canaglia was the leading scorer of the Italian club Lazio in 1975. I was the highest paid player in Italy, and therefore I was a bit unhealthy. When I first met him in, in Rome, I was in his car, and he had a gun in the glove department. Oh, you know, I, I, I said, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> he thrust himself upon us. His time in Italy was running out. He was been thrown off the national team. I mean, it was the easiest signing of a, a name player that anyone could ever have. My first wife was American, like my second wife was American. Therefore, I said, let's go to America. Talks a lot, and half of it's not worth listening to. The other half I wouldn't listen to either, so where you got him? Giorgio Canali is Italian, speaks English with a Welsh accent, scored a lot of goals, and those are about the only positive things I can think to say about him. Very disagreeable fellow at times. He was a backstabbing individual. They probably can't stand me, I don't give a shit. Why don't these people just judge me for what I did on the field? That would be a nice thing, wouldn't it? Steve Ross brought in five new players that year, three from overseas, none more prolific than Giorgio Canaglia. Yeah, I was demanding on the field, yeah, but at the end of the day, there is nobody that's got more goals in the history of North America's ugly than myself. Giorgio was extremely passionate about soccer, and I think he found a like-minded individual in my father. Pele was his prize catch, but Giorgio became his confidant. He's my man. He's my man. Let me tell you, Giorgio and Steve Ross had a very strange relationship. I, I don't know what it was, but he did have a, a Steve Ross, he had his ear. That's absolutely the truth. I think Giorgio ha had won a soft spot in, in the heart of Steve Ross. I remember Ross wearing a pair of Cosmo sweatpants with the number nine on it, Canalia's number he was wearing Canalia's pants. That was sort of a metaphor for their relationship. Giorgio was the opposite of a Pele. Giorgio wore his emotions on his sleeve, dynamic, big, good-looking, long hair, an idol like a movie star in Italy. When you walk down the street with Giorgio, it was like walking down the street in the heyday of Joe DiMaggio or Mickey Mantle. Pele reached the whole world and got New York's attention. Giorgio put it over the top because people wanted to come to boo him or cheer him or yell at him or throw things at him. And that's the kind of passion you expect in New York. He scored 19 goals in 19 games, while Pele led the league in assists. Together, they took the Cosmos, kicking and screaming into the playoffs. Giorgio was a little jealous of Pele. He wanted to be Pelé. I just wanted to score goals. I, I didn't care who played beside me, really. I never did. That's why sometimes I wasn't liked. But I don't care about that either. He's the only professional player I've ever heard in my life who would make criticisms of Pelé. Off the field, he was all right. He's, you know, a very quiet person, a lovable person. On the field, I had some problems with him, yeah. There was a memorable episode in the Cosmos locker room when Canalia said that he was disgusted that Pe Pelé wasn't giving him the service that he needed to score goals. Pelé, you can imagine, is not used to teammates criticizing him, fired right back and said, you shoot from no fucking angle. And Canalia jumped off his stool and shouted, I am Canalia, if I shoot from some place, it's because Canalia can score from that place. And Pelé was near tears, shook his head and walked out of the locker room. I didn't want him to do bad. I wanted him to do well. But he kept coming inside next to me and I said, you know, listen, one guy's gonna mark the tours. So try to stay wide because you'll be more effective 
and you'll score goals. All great goal scorers have an ego. You give me the ball. Why are you giving it to Pelly? Give it to me. He wants the ball. He wants to score. Listen, my friend, if you don't have egos in life, especially in, in the sports, you're not going to go very far. Yeah.